Hello everyone! First of all, I'd like to know that there aren't many electric cars from Japan on the market. While there are models from China, those produced by Japanese companies for the local market are quite rare. Today, I want to introduce you to one such car, the Nissan Aria, an electric crossover. Although developed in Japan, this particular model is produced in China for the local market. You are watching the Volt Auto channel. Glory to Ukraine! Glory to the heroes! Let's get started! It's hard to believe, but this model was introduced to the automotive world in June 2020. That's when the presentation took place, marking the arrival of essentially the second modern electric car from the renowned Japanese automaker, with the first being the Nissan Leaf. Aria also became the first model to feature Nissan's updated logo. The design team had been working on it since 2017. As you can see, the logo, since the early 2020s, shares a common idea with the previous emblem, but with graphical changes. Over time, this emblem has appeared on all modern models of the Japanese brand. The central panel of the emblem contains 20 LED lights, making the car recognizable even in low light conditions. The company classified the body of the electric car as a coupe crossover. Back then, manufacturers were trying to present something non-traditional to consumers, suggesting that this is not just a regular crossover, but an almost universal vehicle with the coupe features. Thanks to its coupe-like silhouette, the electric car looks more compact than it actually is. Its length is 4.6 meters, width is 1.85 meters, and the height is 1.66 meters. These dimensions classify it at least as a mid-size electric crossover. Its size is comparable to a fuel-powered Nissan X-Trail, and in terms of wheelbase, the electric model even surpasses the internal combustion engine version. 2.775 meters compared to 2.706 meters. This means more space in the cabin. The company referred to the new exterior style as a timeless Japanese futurism. Instead of a traditional radiator grille, there is a solid panel with integrated lightning. Designers convey the new style through smooth and streamlined forms, maintaining the overall integrity of the car's image. Wide body sides, short overhangs, a long graceful roofline and large wheels give the novelty a sense of solidity. The black panel, in place of the traditional radiator grille and the slim curved LED headlights, draw attention from the front. The panel at the grille's location is adorned with the traditional Japanese kumiko pattern. It not only decorates the car, but also protects elements of the Pro Pilot system and sensors for intelligent keyless access. Nissan Aria is the first model on the new electric platform of the Reno Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance. The main innovation compared to the Leaf is the rear independent suspension and the option to install the electric motor on the rear axle. All components and units are mass produced, meaning they are used in other models, not just those with the Nissan logo. Under the hood, in addition to the electric motor, only climate system components and electronic blocks are installed, freeing up the space for the front seat passenger's legs. Adding to the exterior design, despite the possible motor on the second axle, the rear part is slightly raised and there is a spoiler on the roof. The pillars that transition into the fender stand out, where different body parts made of printed and polished metal, plastic and glass come together. The wheel arches, visually expanded by black framing, house five spoke wheels, which can be either 19 inches or 20 inches. Regarding the technical aspect, everything is reliable, which is a standard for Japanese models. Five modifications are offered for different markets. For the Chinese market, the Nissan Aria essentially has two modifications, both equipped with a 90 kWh battery. The battery provides a range of up to 533 km on the full charge for the most powerful modification. The battery, of course, has a liquid cooling system. This is something that owners of the first electric car from this brand, the Nissan Leaf, are well aware of and miss. The single motor version has a front-wheel drive setup. Its power is 178 kilowatts or 242 horsepower. It's the long-range Aria for the Chinese market offering a range of 623 kilometers according to the local CLTC assessment cycle. 
However, it's the slowest area as it takes 8.4 seconds to accelerate to 100 km per hour. It won't reach the second hundred as the maximum speed of the single motor versions is limited to 160 km per hour. Nissan also thought about an all-wheel drive option. This version has two motors, one on each axle, delivering 320 kW or 435 electric horsepower. The range on the full charge is 559 km or 539 km depending on the additional features. Aria with these specifications accelerates to 100 km per hour in 5.7 seconds. In the performance version, with two electric motors totaling 394 horsepower, the Nissan electric car accelerates to 100 km per hour in 5.1 seconds, with a range of up to 533 km on the full charge. The Nissan Aria electric crossover is a safe vehicle, as confirmed by its 5-star safety rating from the Euron Cap in 2022. It performed exceptionally well in all tests. The second production electric car from Nissan passed crash tests without any issues. It underwent frontal impact testing, including a test with a 50% width overlap when colliding with a deformable barrier. The vehicles, including the Japanese model, were tested at a speed of 50 km per hour. Side impact tests also provided insights into the model's safety. For frontal impacts, the car scored 85%. In a frontal impact with a partial width overlap, only the passenger might experience minor injuries. The rest of the load showed green marks for all types of impacts. The electronic systems of the crossover may have some errors in pedestrian detection during turns at intersections and in detecting cyclists in complex situations, such as emerging from behind an obstacle. As a result, the score is 74%. Nissan also performed well in tests for braking before other vehicles, with a rating of over 90%. The active safety features were also evaluated, including scenarios for autonomous emergency braking, passenger monitoring, seatbelt reminders and lane-keeping technologies at different speeds. The overall rating – a full 5 stars. Before we move on to the interior review, I'd like to tell you about two almost iconic models for this Japanese brand. Both cars are electric. They are Tama from the mid-20th century and Leaf from the early 21st century. The Japanese Tahikawa Airplane Company was one of the firms producing Mitsubishi Zero fighter planes. Similarly to what happened with the German Messerschmitt after Germany's defeat in World War II, the same fate befell this aircraft manufacturer plan. They were prohibited from producing airplanes, so after the war the Japanese shifted to car manufacturing, but not fueled ones. The first electric car from this company was designed by aviational engineers, and their division later reorganized into a separate structure. The result was the Tokyo Electric Car Company's creation, named Tama, after one of Tokyo's districts. It's clear why they chose electric propulsion back then. In the post-war period, the country's oil industry was almost stagnant while power plants continued to operate. In 1947, the Tama electric car with rear opening doors hit the roads. As you can see, the body was narrow, but it accommodated three Japanese passengers and one driver. Besides the passenger version, there were pickup truck variations without rear seats and with shortened doors. And now let's fast forward to modern times. The Nissan Leaf can be called the first mass-market electric car, and that's no exaggeration. At its market entry, it successfully embodied the components defining the price and quality concept more than any other electric car. Thousands of buyers of used Nissan Leafs from the former Soviet countries would likely agree with us. Since 2010, the five-door hatchback has been on the global market, powered by electric motors of various capacities and equipped with a lithium-ion battery. In its first version, the battery capacity was only 24 kWh. Let's not dwell on the range for now. In 2013, the electric car received its first updates. Engineers improved the power electronics, added the ability to charge from a household outlet and increased the efficiency of the electric motor. The new battery started to be installed in this model from 2015, with a capacity of 30 kWh, providing a range of 250 km. The second generation of the Nissan Leaf has been produced since 2017. The new version features a 150 horsepower electric motor. The lithium-ion battery has increased in capacity to 40 kWh. The claimed range is 378 km. 
We, the Volt Auto Channel, are heading to the Geneva International Motor Show. It will be the 100th anniversary motor show in the Swiss city. It kicks off on February 26 and runs until the 3rd of March. The automotive event of the year will traditionally take place at the Palexpo Exhibition Center. In these shots, you see how everything unfolded last time in 2019. Since 2020, due to the coronavirus pandemic, the Geneva Auto Show has been cancelled multiple times, but it has not reached the final closure. Organizers expect around 10,000 journalists to attend the revived auto show. We will be among them. On the opening day, watch the first report about this European world-class motor show on our channel. It is already known that at least five Chinese automakers will present their models at the auto show in Switzerland. In terms of numbers of electric sedans, hatchbacks and crossovers, Chinese models will take the second place, after local European brands. In the comments, you can guess which Chinese brands will participate in the Geneva Auto Show. And, as we already mentioned, we will prepare the first video from the Motor Show on Monday, February 26, at noon. So, you can support our journey by liking this video and commenting. Looking forward to the first video from Geneva. It's now common to see two screens on the front panel, each with a 12-inch diagonal. However, the touch-sensitive climate control buttons hidden beneath the front panel trim still look quite unique. When the ignition is off, the control panel is invisible, and only after starting the car the buttons illuminate, responding to touches with vibration. The interior of the model is usually compared to a lounge zone, but it's more like a minimalist high-tech oasis. Given that this car originates from Japan, there is nothing surprising about that. Take note of the central tunnel between the seats. It's not connected to the front panel. On it, you'll find a mode selection joystick, several service buttons and an armrest. In some configurations, a foldable laptop table is hidden in it. However, this table is not included in the base configuration. You can only order it as an option. There is an interesting solution with the retractable glove compartment with the lid in this electric car. The activation button is on the armrest behind the driving mode selector. By the way, you decide how far forward or backward the central tunnel is. You can move it with a rocker switch located on the left front part of the tunnel. The rear seat is what you would expect from a crossover of the renowned Japanese brand. It features a heating function, three headrests and enough space for three passengers. As it is a mid-size crossover, there is a foldable armrest with two cup holders. Passengers in the second row feel great. I personally checked and I enjoyed riding in the back as much as in the front. Three adults can sit in the back, provided that the central tunnel block is not pushed all the way back. Despite the sloping roof, it doesn't create discomfort for tall passengers in the second row. The panoramic roof deserves special attention. It's exactly what you would expect from a crossovers of this caliber. The luggage compartment volume is 468 liters for the single motor versions and 415 liters for dual motor ones. There is a storage space beneath the floor. There is no spare tire in our configuration, but it can easily fit in the truck. There is plenty of space. The folded rear seat bags form a flat floor, allowing you to transport even a small refrigerator. The fifth door, of course, opens and closes at the touch of a button. The charging port lids are located on the front fenders. If the car is not turned on, you won't be able to open them, as their covers are locked. Yes, this is a standard feature, but usually for models that fall into the premium segment. On the left is the slow charging port, gb tac type, which allows you to charge the electric car, for example, from a regular household outlet. On the right, under the lid, there is a fast charging port of the gb tdc standard. This port allows you to replenish the battery charge at stations with direct current. See you in the next video!